this year, Tires and Accessories took a trip to Guangrou County for the Guangrou Rubber Tire and Automotive Accessory Exhibition in Shandong Province in China. It's the first time we've been back into the, the depths, if you like, of the Chinese tire market for obvious reasons over the last few years. And what was striking was just how much things have changed. So to get a feeling about how the market had developed in the last couple of years during the, the pandemic, we caught up with Alex Shi, who's the editor of, of Car and Tire, a B2C title that does some very interesting tire testing in the domestic Chinese market in order to find out more. So uh, it's my pleasure to be here and we're going to discuss some interesting um, topics. First of all, I think beginning with the development of the uh, tyre market coming out of China into Europe and then proceeding on to a discussion about the, the relative uh, points relating to on, online tyre sales in Europe and in China. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we can start the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. So I, I haven't been here for about four years. Everyone knows why. There's cool. been obvious reasons why travel has been more difficult than it used to be. Yeah. But, um, but what's been going on in the market in, in that time? Okay. Um, actually, we have experienced very hard time during mm. the pandemic, um, as everyone knows. Mm. Uh, but from last year, actually, the tire business in China is, is totally uh, getting out of that sluggish mm -hmm. market. And um, actually, most of the tire manufacturers in China last year gained a lot of money, <laughs> even though uh, the manufacturers uh, who, have, who have experienced a very uh, long time lost uh, have gained money mm -hmm. um, last year. Um, okay. due, thanks to the very strong export to the other countries, um, because last year, you know, uh, thanks to the currency, the currency uh, change, exchange mm. rate has uh, changed a lot. So a lot of Chinese manufacturers have um, benefited from that. Uh, so uh, in terms of our domest domestic market, actually, um, Chinese tires are gaining market share as well because of um, the uh, new energy, the, the new uh, green energy uh, vehicles in China have experienced a very quick uh, rise in China. So yeah, that's something I saw as soon as I got off the airplane at Beijing. When you step outside, the vehicles look different. So there are far more taxis that are electric vehicles, far more cars in general that are electric vehicles than were just five years ago. I think that's one example of, of what you're describing. Oh, exactly, exactly. There's a lot uh, of change compared to five years ago, for example, a lot of electric cars. I talked to my colleagues um, two weeks ago. I went to Shanghai for a, a business trip and I took a lot of electric cars as taxi. Mm. And that amazed me. So uh, a lot of Chinese manufacturers are benefiting from this trend and their tires are uh, starting to replace foreign brands like um, Michelin, Goodyear, uh, Bridgestone in China. That's something else I noticed uh, back in, in the UK, and we have to say that Europe is made up of, of 20, as a continent, 27 or 28 countries of different economies, but in the UK, our economy was celebrating 0.6% growth, yeah. whereas here it is 6%, and people call this re uh, recovery. To me, that's explosion. So <laughs> how much of it is to do with the, the growth of the overall economy uh, versus these, these structural impacts like electric vehicle tires? Yeah, I think it's especially the, the structure impact, actually. Mm -hmm. um, even though that's a huge amount of GDP uh, growth, mm -hmm. but compared to our original speed of uh, growth, it's it's it has slowed down mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, so we don't I don't think I, I don't think we benefit a lot from GDP growth, but the structure has totally changed. Mm -hmm. um, this year at the, in the beginning of this year, chi China's um, export of electric export of cars mm -hmm. has uh, surpassed Japan okay. and become the become number one in terms of car export. So I think electric cars contributed a lot to that, to that growth, to that change. So Chinese manufacturers just um, get, a, get a profit from it. And with cars come 
tyres. In, in Europe, we've seen there's been a, a number of different philosophies to electric vehicles and tyres from the different manufacturers. And they seem to work something like this. If we are a, a premium company, then our tyres are, are simply high quality enough that they will work with electric vehicles uh, that require high torque, high weight capacity, high speed rating. Um, but others are saying, no, you must have a, an electric vehicle specific tyre for those uh, same reasons and others still uh, are supplying electric vehicle specific tyres as OE but are supplying high performance tyres as, as replacement. How has that translated into the Chinese market? Oh, that's, um, I'm so glad you brought this question because that's, um, that, that's something Chinese manufacturers have been thinking about and even uh, arguing in the past two years actually. So we, we hesitate between uh, specific electric car tires and high performance tires actually. Okay. Now I think the trend here in China is the customers, the end users, they don't have any they don't have any knowledge on this. They don't care about whether it's electric specific electric cars or not. But the manufacturers start to think about this question. And I think the trend is most of the companies, the ma the manufacturers will introduce their uh, specific electric cars in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several, like uh, Kamho, uh, at the end of this month, they're, they are gonna, they are gonna uh, introduce, present their new type of electric car tire as mm -hmm. well. A lot of companies will do that. I think that will become a trend, even though we are not quite sure how the customers will react mm -hmm. on this, but we start to do that already. So we're getting to this stage now uh, and I'll, I'll refer to the UK here, where we are now getting evidence of not putting EV specific tyres on an EV means that they are wearing maybe three to four times quicker than if they are EV specific ah. due to the construction, due to the different compounds. Uh, we get that information from the annual vehicle roadworthy test, we call it the MOT, uh -huh. and electric vehicles seem to be failing on the basis of tyres at this rate three to four times quicker than conventional cars. The only uh, explanation for that can be that they're wearing through tyres quicker or the tyres that they are, are on the electric vehicles aren't constructed as robustly. I think it's the former and not the latter and uh, that tells us something that maybe the consumers don't know a lot about this but they will know when their yeah. tyres run out. Yeah, one day they will know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. Most of the manufacturers realise that uh, electric cars have different uh, features so they must have this kind of um, specific car tire. But on the other hand, they don't want to lose the uh, petrol car market as well. They want, they still, they, they promote a new tire and they want to sell the tire to both uh, electric cars and traditional cars. Yep. That's a marketing, uh, marketing issue actually. So <clears throat> speaking about electric vehicles takes us also towards the subject of ownership models. When, when it comes to electric vehicles, um, some take Tesla, for example, are selling them directly to the consumer online. Yeah. And uh, this brings with it subscription models and totally different ways of, of doing business than we had before. There is some evidence that this is beginning to translate into tire replacement as well. Um, I'd love to learn something about how online tire sales are going in, in China. Yeah, um, it's increasing. <clears throat> it's increasing, especially for you know, the new generations here in, in China, they, they are very used to online purchasing, actually. Uh, they, they use Taobao, they use every online tool to purchase their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, goods. So it's a habit. The habit is there. Uh, the, only, the only challenge for us is how, we are, how much we're used to, to buying tires online. And I think with the... Uh, the three or the two or three, three actually, three to four big online uh, sales dealers are, are growing very fast. Mm -hmm. Actually, we were developing, people are developing that kind of habit as well. So that's why we see, uh, like we talked about just now, the biggest online, <clears throat> online uh, tire uh, sales dealer has gone public uh, in the beginning of this year, and that's a sign. Mm -hmm. That's a sign. That, that means their, their revenue is already very big and uh, they're still growing. 
growing very, very fast. That, that success is they've answered the question of connecting online with real life with a franchise network. That's right. I think uh, based on my limited knowledge on Europe, on European market or American market, online is online. But here, online and offline, the real uh, franchise stores are, are a must. Mm -hmm. Actually, the biggest, the biggest player here um, is Tuhu. Um, they were purely online, actually. They, they, they sold tires online, and, and then they had a lot of you know, uh, small independent dealers to mount tires for them. Mm -hmm. And they gave some, some mounting fees to the ind independent dealers. That was their original model, business model. But recent, recently, <clears throat> since 2016, actually, they started to develop a lot of franchised stores. And uh, the business model has totally changed mm -hmm. in this case. And it's more powerful, I think. Uh, it's very difficult for other competitors to enter into this market right now. You can still do online, but you don't have offline ser service mm -hmm. um, uh, franchise stores. So. Uh, like Tuhu, they have <clears throat> the, the biggest um, player here. They have around 6,000 6, franchise stores and also 20 to 30,000 independent dealers to, uh, to do mounting service for them. And then they started to sell tires to those independent dealers as well. Mm -hmm. so, so we can say they do B2C business and B2B business at the same time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But of course, B2C business is their main business model. That's what's happening here in China. I mean, and that scale is something that's quite fascinating to me because the numbers you're quoting are roughly equivalent to every single <laughs> point of sale in the UK. Yeah. Uh, with it's one, a big country. <laughs> yeah, with, yes, it's a big country, but one, one online Thai retailer. And um, there are some similarities, but there are also some differences to what, we, what we've seen in Europe. Yeah. If, um, thank you. If I take uh, the, the largest players, for example, they, they've come with a heritage of bricks and mortar retail, mm. and then they've moved towards the online. Uh, <coughs> QuickFit, for example, is part of the Etel Group, European Tire Enterprises Limited, which, uh, the, and it's the biggest retail brand they have. They, uh, they appointed many years ago, about 20 years ago, uh, a young man called uh, Mike Welsh to, to run their online tire business. Mm -hmm. He actually ended up founding Black Circles, which is the number one Okay. online tie retailer okay. uh, in, in the UK. Um, and that was bought about five years ago by Michelin. Mm. So they are now integrating that into their business. But one of the reasons for his success was developing this, not, not really a, a franchise network per se, but a dealer network, a, a fitting network that was oh. uh, integrated into uh, the model. Meanwhile, these, these more conventional large players, they took a little bit longer to be able to to integrate the online with the offline. But that's changed now. And what we're seeing is that they have the most visited websites. And in fact, uh, the, the, the number two retailer told me recently, um, somebody from their staff told me that uh, most of the people walking through the door are already booked online. So they've oh. gone are the days of phone calls or prospective sales when people drive up and expect business. Everybody already booked online, okay. um, nine out of 10 or more. And uh, that gives us an illustration of how, how things have changed. But the, the biggest uh, selector moving forward is actually what people do prior to that stage. So we call mm. it the pre-sale research. Um, how does that work in China? You mean the, uh, the pre-sale research? Yeah, so before they decide to purchase, okay. wh where are people learning about tires? Uh, so for, for, for uh, us, we know that 60 to 80% of consumers, <clears throat> they do online research first. And so the question is, where do they get their information? A very good question. Uh, <clears throat> there's no, I don't think there's any, any uh, how to say, good sources of information for, for the, pre, for the pre-sale research. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, I don't know. They ask friends, and some of them they 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 go to the they go to the dealer directly, and the dealers are their <laughs> information source. Mm. Uh, so the dealers some need some app, mm. some app, but but we don't definitely we don't have a specialized 
entire review mm -hmm. uh, website or any app to provide information uh, to the customers. Um, maybe they go to some general um, app. Uh, for example, um, an, a very popular app here in China is called Little Red Book, okay. 小红书, and on that app, we can research a lot of, a lot of things. You can search for any information you want to, uh, uh, including tires, mm -hmm. but it's not professional, it's not specific for tires. And you don't have much information on tires, especially because it's a very niche uh, mm -hmm. market as well. So I don't, on Tuhu's website, yes, you can look at the, uh, the, the, the comments from, from other customers who, who, who have bought uh, the tires on Tuhu website. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, uh, a very popular way. You go to Taobao. If you want to buy something, you, you look at the comments. That's what you do here in China. Um, and social media, is that, is that where people find information? I, I'm, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so because, no, no, I don't think so. Uh, even on uh, TikTok China, Douyin, uh, we don't have much information on that. You don't have, a, how do you say, you don't have a um, valid source of information. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of information, but you don't have a, a, a valid one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or, or a trustful one. It, it, it's, no, we don't, we don't have that. I, I know in America we have uh, like high review, uh, uh, like websites like this. Mm -hmm. So how, how does that Tyrac happen? Tyrac is probably the biggest in the US. Yeah, um, and, uh, and they're an interesting proposition because they're an online retailer that has worked really hard on reviewing tires. Mm -hmm. So they are directly connected, which for me, uh, means that it's, it's a little bit less independent than if it wasn't, but no one can question the quality of, of the work they do and also the popularity. Mm. A lot of searches are going there. Um, tire Reviews um, in .co.uk is, is a UK-based site, but they got so good at producing YouTube videos that um, the, the main author of that, Jonathan Benson, moved to the US and he's actually producing lots of content in the US now. Um, we were looking into this as well, and we've talked about this before. Yep. We produced a site called whattire.com, mm -hmm. which uh, seeks to be that valid source and produce an independent uh, database of oh. 300,000 tires and lots I of like test that results. Idea. Oh, thank you. It's, it's something we're, we're hoping will help meet this, this very need. Um, but we know that if you don't, what you have is a danger of the race to the bottom. So consumers, when they're looking for shopping, yeah. um, they use reverse price order. Mm -hmm. And so they have, if it's just round and black, then they'll choose the cheapest one. But all our research shows if you choose cheap, you'll get bad performance. Exactly. But if you choose good performance, you can get good value. Yeah, you so the point. Yeah, so this is what we, we, we want, to, want to help communicate with that. Um, but to be honest, we don't mind which tool consumers use as long as they're using a tool that tells them real information about mm. the performance of the tire, not just the price. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like the idea of uh, what tire.com does actually. Here in China, we, we don't have this kind of... We, uh, our company, actually, we tried, we tried to uh, we do tire testing uh -huh. as, as well here. And um, originally, our idea was to test as many tires as we can so we can provide this kind of valid source mm -hmm. to our customers. But, you know, it's very expensive to, mm -hmm. to promote this kind of a website or social media. Mm -hmm. So you have very good testing capabilities, but uh, it's very expensive and hard to let everyone know your testing results. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why till today, I don't think customers have, have any valid source like, like that. Mm -hmm. mm, but I'm so glad, but I'm very interested in, in the idea that you brought up just now. Uh, it, give, it gives me some ideas well here in China. Mm. I think maybe, maybe we have to talk some more about that later, but yeah. absolutely. This maybe is, a Chinese version of whattire.com in China. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Time will tell. But yeah. the, the, the important thing is that we, we have to help consumers get away from that race to the bottom. Um, the, I think there were some conventional re retailers, they were concerned online will just make tires cheaper, yeah. not, not make sales better. However, if you add in this qualified information, you have the opportunity to do something better with the sale. And again, if you take examples of the most successful online tire retailers, 
uh, in Europe, they're not the ones that just deliver the tyre with no service. They're not the ones that deliver the cheapest tyres. They're the ones that are at least selling value, if not outright performance. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, we have, um, uh, we've tried something new here in China. Maybe I can share this information with you. Uh, you know, like uh, the online uh, uh, tire dealer like Tuhu, they started to uh, produce their own brand brand tire. Okay. Yeah, they started to do some like Tuhu tire or, or something. But it's difficult for them to sell their own brand to, to the consumers as well, okay. even though they have a lot of, you know, uh, customer, a big customer base. So they need to have some um, credibility for their tires as well. Mm -hmm. So we started to test their tires and we give the test report uh, or certificate to, to them. And then they, they put the certificate on their website okay. to support their sales. So when people see, oh, oh, we have this certificate or testing report from a third party, uh, in, in, an independent third party media, yep. they're going to have, they're going to have more trust. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we start to do in China here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now that's a great way of, of, of separating out what are the best performing products yeah. and letting the consumer know um, there's a culture of tire testing yeah. in Europe, especially in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Uh, those consumers are historically premium brand consumers, mm. but they also have these big motoring associations. One is called ADAC and they do very, very in-depth testing. So people, when it comes to changing to winter tires from summer tires especially, are able to research their products with some detail. Now, what we did with what tire was, okay, let's take all this data mm -hmm. from all these sources, mm -hmm. and then we can choose which are the best tires in each category and give awards. So it's not just that they have a tire, but they, they have been tested. They have OE, they have ESG, yeah. and then these are the tires that are really performing. What's interesting to me is that some of the best known companies in the world, yes, they maybe win, but we also see some quite surprising uh, outperformances, if you like, from, from other brands that are providing excellent value. Uh, and that is, that is what consumers need. And that mm. is what retailers and wholesalers need as well. A product that really performs, but isn't the cheapest. Exactly. So on your whattire.com, do you, do you have price index to show to the consumers or just the performance index? So we, we do everything performance first, mm. but it wouldn't be a true consumer facing site if there was no price information. Okay. And that's an interesting line to walk with retailers where they can have uh, complex arrangements with different regions, with different exactly. cities, with different customers about what the price is. Um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, maybe they don't want to sell off the price. Maybe they want to sell off the performance. Mm -hmm. And so that leads to some, some complex arguments with those, those companies. But our, our solution is that we can provide all that information um, because the consumer needs it, number one. Number two, we don't have to put that at the front. We don't have to make that the primary point of reference. Uh, number three, we do it on the basis of, of average mm -hmm. rather 